Hello, world. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on Adobe Live. It's nice to see you. We're here with our friend, Justin. Hi, Justin. Hey, Andrew. Hey, everyone. Uh, so if you're just joining us, this is the second in the series of these videos. Um, we are covering a lot of uh, effects, custom effects, preset effects, all kinds of stuff with Justin. But before we hop in today, I just want to thank you for being here. Uh, if you are tuning into Adobe Live and watching live, if you have questions, go ahead and drop them in chat. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, you can comment down below with any questions that you have. Uh, and if you are watching us live, hopefully you've been catching the Adobe Express Bootcamp that's been happening right before this show at 11.30 a.m. every day. Uh, we're continuing that tomorrow with Katrina. We are going to be doing some content creation in Adobe Express. And then tomorrow at noon Pacific time, we have a special episode of Office Hours coming to you about how to use Adobe Express as a creative professional. So. Tune in for all those things, set all those calendar reminders, but we don't have to worry about those now because now we have our friend Justin here. Justin, go ahead and introduce yourself to all the people that may not have been watching yesterday and tell us a little bit about you. Sure, thanks, Andrew. Yeah, so yesterday we did a stream going over all the basics of effects in Adobe Premiere Pro. And today we're gonna be continuing that with a more thorough tour of all the effects as well as uh, some more advanced little complete ideas. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Justin Odisho. Uh, I've been sharing how to's and tips on editing and uh, specifically in Adobe Photoshop Premiere and After Effects for honestly like over maybe 10 years now. <laughs> um, so I've got a YouTube channel, just my name, Justin Odisho, where I have hundreds and hundreds of tutorials and walkthroughs and effect things. And I've also got, uh, if you check out my website, justinodisho.com. Uh, I've got some resources and things available in my shop. So uh, if you want a free stock footage pack, I have that available. And uh, you can find me in other places like podcasts. I've interviewed lots of other cool creatives and um, yeah, a little bit of everything, but I'm easy to reach just Sweet. on my website and YouTube. Yep, and we used a couple of those effects yesterday that you can grab on the site. And again, free knowledge on YouTube. Why not? Why not hang out and check it out? Uh, check out YouTube uh, on Justin's channel. Check out Adobe Live on YouTube. Hang out here on Behance, wherever you are, as long as you're learning something. That's what we care about. Um, and I'm actually really excited today because Justin, we kind of got like a little wild yesterday and I was thoroughly enjoying just stacking effects and seeing what happens. Um, so today, yesterday was kind of just, we were all over the place with effects, doing really cool stuff. What are we getting into today? Because I know we're kind of stepping the game up. Right, so yesterday, you know, there's always, there's all these little buttons and stuff that we learned about. So if you missed that, definitely go through. Uh, we went over like what every little icon and button does in all these panels and just like jumped from place to place because it's all like connected, a tree of knowledge there. But uh, today we're gonna take, we're, we're working in the effects panel still, but we're gonna take a, a more deep dive, like systematic tour through a sampling of some of all of the effects from each thing, from each folder, and uh, a couple of ideas on how to use some of these key effects. That way my hope is that whoever's watching this comes away with it with like a good, sampling of what's available for them that way they can be more equipped for editing and creating stuff in the future sweet and yes for all of those that are watching if you have questions go ahead and drop them in chat as we go um, i'll relay them and we can chat through and if you're learning something share it with us we'd love to know uh what you're learning here i am going to learn so much i learned so much yesterday i am kind of a video novice i actually was in premiere pro this morning uh just cutting down videos and changing audio for promo stuff but I'm excited to hop in and learn more about effects, how we can stack them, how we can use them, and hopefully incorporate them into my workflow um, and hopefully into your workflows at home as you watch. Uh, so let's hop in, let's get started. Where do we wanna go first? What's our first effect zone we're jumping into? Definitely, sure. So yeah, so if anyone has any questions along the way, just let Andrew know. Also, we've got our uh, Premiere oh, yeah. Pro mug. Uh, so I've got a Creative South mug. We're close, but yeah. we we're yeah not sponsored, but also sponsored. I I actually yeah I got this by uh because the nice people on the Adobe Twitter socials. So oh yes, definitely yeah. touch them. But, a little sip break before we get started feels right. right. So why don't we just start? I've got a few cool ideas in mind. We're gonna create some transitions. Uh, we're gonna get more deep into keyframes. But why don't we get started? We're just gonna take a sample tour through a couple effects out of each folder. These are just alphabetic. So we're going to begin here with the lighting effects uh, effect. That's the one I'm going to pick here from the adjust folder. And we're going to use this 
Um, one idea that I'm going to show you on what to do with this is we're going to try to make some make an image look a little bit more day to night. So we're going to take a daytime photo and Ooh. try to turn it more into night. So I'll try it on a couple clips. But for example, here's one where I think uh, it would work well, right? We have this uh, cool shot, upward shot of trees uh, in some wooded area. And clearly it's daytime here. You know, it's pretty bright up there. But I think this is a perfect shot for something that we could use the lighting effects tool to transform it into a nighttime shot. So I'm going to click and drag this lighting effects tool onto this clip, just like we've seen before. And just like we talked about in the first day stream, check that out the replay. If you missed it, we're going to head over to the effect controls panel and we see our lighting effects effect. So this one's uh, a little bit uh, more uh, there's a lot of options in here as opposed to many effects. Um, it's like it's a whole little suite of options here. And by default, it just adds one little ambient light. But the cool part about this is we have all these different options. So the first thing I'm going to adjust is instead of a white light, uh, let's change it to more of like a dark blue, like something you'd expect in a nighttime. Uh, and we're also going to change the light type from spotlight we're going to try some different ones so spotlight you see this i mean this could be for different ideas like lighting up a stage but what i'm going to do is one called omni so it's just more of like uh an overall light on this image and we're actually also going to change the this light color to be something like more like a dark blue and uh, if we make it too dark we can always scale that back so there's a few options here intensity um and also uh the let's let's make it a little lighter i think it's a little too dark uh, a little too purple but we're going to start out with something like that and then we can also adjust some of the other options here to go for a more nighttime look but we want to make it realistic like right now it looks too blue in my opinion but uh okay once we have something like this uh, what we have achieved so far is like a dark vignette, a lighter circle in the middle, but still it's a bit strong. So uh, before we proceed, uh, the cool part about lighting effects is that you can actually make up to five lights here. So if you wanted to like make a multicolored light in each corner, uh, you do have the option to do that. Like, let's say for some reason I wanted to add like some kind of moonlight, uh, I could make a really small, really small spotlight. Like so, and like move the center around a little bit. Obviously, in this case, that might not actually look like a moon, but I'm imagining other scenarios where maybe it's want... moonish. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm imagining other scenarios where maybe, uh, actually, that does look like somewhat uh, moonish. For what it was from the day, this looks very nice. Like, it definitely looks like I'm in the forest at like science camp at 3 a.m. in the. <laughs> Uh, right and um yeah and and uh like you can also imagine other uses like like flashlights or different spotlights like red green blue and also remember the other cool thing that we talked about in part one is how we can use keyframes to make anything like add flexibility and animation to anything so even if we did add a moon and we wanted to like sort of make the moon move a little bit we can add keyframes that can make it move all the way across the screen slowly if we want so uh something like this obviously moons don't move that fast but uh the other thing that you can do for this type of effect is a, a cool little trick like sometimes you have intensity options but you don't have opacity options for a lot of these uh so one thing I like to do if ever I want to just tone down the overall strength of an effect is create a mask on that effect. And I can just make this mask go over the whole frame of our image. And we'll, we'll get into masks in a little bit further too. And we can just make the mask opacity like maybe slightly lower. So maybe it's not such a deep blue. Maybe it's more like, yeah, like 95% or something like that. And with this, we we can take 
what was this daytime image. And if I just, if we remember from day one, we could just toggle the effect on or off with this little FX badge. We could take what was our daytime forest image and give it a little bit more of a nighttime feel for if, if we need to do something like that. Um, and uh, you can imagine other scenarios too. Like uh, I had a, I had an editing friend of mine call me the other day and he had two footages that were shot in a car and one of them was shot in the day and one of them was shot at night with like a, a lot of red traffic lights. And so what I told him to try was maybe try using something like this effect to add sort of like a dark red effect over top. Just so, to give it that kind of night ambiance to try to match the lighting, right? Right. And there's other things that you could do as well in Premiere, like in the Lumetri color tab uh, where you could lower saturation or, you know, lower the overall exposure and color balance that you could really fine tune this to to look really realistic. Um, but combined with the lighting effects, which is cool because it gives you those spotlight options, uh, you can really transform the overall vibe of your clip. So it can be creative or functional like like how my friend called me and really needed to match those two colors a little bit better. So yeah, that's that's the lighting effects. That's one in the adjust folder. And it, the other things, uh, mostly the adjust folder is um, things that are similar to like adjusting the levels or, or lighting or things like that. So again, if you want a full, like every single effect walkthrough, check out my YouTube channel. I have a whole playlist called Every Effect Explained. But today we're just going to be doing like a simple site, like a tour with the, some key fun ones and uh, some key ideas to do to do with them. So let's move over to our next folder. Uh, maybe I'll do a couple for like, you know, in adjust, I'd say lighting effects is like the most fun. But uh, especially when we get to the distort folder, we might have to stop at a few effects. So the next one that we're going to work with is the directional blur. So actually, maybe the directional and the Gaussian blur. Uh, the Gaussian blur is quite simple. So if we add a Gaussian blur, uh, this I'd say is a super functional effect. Uh, if you're a, if you're a video editor, you need to know this effect. It's like or if you could only take like five effects to a desert island or ten effects to a desert <laughs> island, you're probably gonna want this one. Uh, well, I, this one I agree. It is yeah. the effect that I use the most, pretty much across the board. This and then like outer glows or drop shadows are the two that I would have to take with me. Right. So I'll, I'll actually I have an idea to, to share for this clip. Right. So uh, the Gaussian blur is quite simple. I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with blur from some sort of editing program in your life. And simply, it makes it look like how I see if I'm not wearing contacts. How about that one? Uh, Blurry. Do all editors have bad vision from staring at computer screens? I mean, you're talking to a guy with glasses, so I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's why I assume it's 100% <laughs> yes. of people I've seen. 100%. <laughs> OK, and the, the other cool thing that you have here, um, which even makes it more of a good desert island effect is you also have the option to just do a horizontal blur like so or just a vertical blur like so um and the directional blur is cool because uh the directional blur is basically the same thing except for it lets you blur in a whole 360 degree you know radius yep Ooh. but not skipping ahead uh with the gaussian blur um you might think like, why would I want to blur an image? So let's say, for example, uh, we wanted to create a cool title screen. So we could we could make the blurriness of this image a little blurry, and then we could add text on top. So if you're working in Premiere Pro, one cool thing is that in the Essential Graphics panel, they actually have a lot of cool uh, built-in templates and titles. So this is uh, definitely something to check out for if you if you have Premiere Pro and Creative Cloud. Yep. And, and there's so much that's included in there. There are also stock templates that you can grab right in that panel. So if you're ever intimidated with like graphics and you're like, I just shoot video, literally essential graphics, just like click around and discover stuff because it is super helpful and it's so easy to incorporate. Right. And and uh, you see how, Andrew, I'm just like um, just mousing over and I can get a preview of what sort of title this is. And I might think, well, I don't want mine to be purple, but that's okay. I can just click and drag it on and I'll show you everything is very adjustable. 
Yep. And this kind of ties into a point that we made in the first stream, how I said, like, a lot of times that I see people ask questions about how to do something uh, and get intimidated, um, just always remember, like, it's probably a preset or it's probably a built-in effect. It's yes. probably not as as hard or from scratch as you think. Not to take away from, like, you know, the 20% of really awesome, like, people, creatives that do really make amazing stuff from scratch but a lot of editing you know it's just maybe you don't know the tool that it was so yep yeah and I, I i would comment on that that like the majority of stuff that you see has an easy way and a hard way and you probably get intimidated because you're like i have to do this the hard way and there's probably an easy way to do that or a resource that someone has already done it for you uh, and so if you're ever intimidated and you're like i don't know how to do this Look up a YouTube video, do a Google search, try to find something here on Adobe Live because there's probably an easy way to do that or a resource that someone has already done it for you that you can utilize. Right, definitely. So we've added this title on here. This is what it looks like by default. And what I will do is highlight it. And if we want to change anything about this, such as the font or the color, uh, we can do that in the Essential Graphics panel. Um, I can just change basically whatever I want. I'll leave it as white, but you see there's the, the text layer and the shape layer. So I can change the stroke color. Let's say I want it to be like more green for, for my theme of my video. Uh, and the other thing you can also do is adjust the animation as well on a lot of these. But yeah, if you see the keyframes, like how we talked about last time, all you got to do is drop those down. And we see that this effect was built in built with some opacity keyframes and some position key anchor point keyframes which are like position um so i'm not going to touch them too much just not to confuse anyone right now we'll build custom stuff with keyframes later but just know a nice thing about whenever you're making presets or templates is that a lot of it is still super editable you can go in there and you can change everything so that it fits your timing and your project so Back to the blur effect, as we as we stated, one cool effect, one cool reason to use it is like, let's say you're making a title screen and you want some sample footage in the background. Uh, blurring it is a nice way to shift the focus from whatever's going on in the video to like bringing focus to like text in front of it, and you can keep it like fully blurred like this, and then as the as the text goes away. I can move forward and add a keyframe. So what I've done is I've pressed this little stopwatch icon and I've set the blurriness to 73. And then as I move forward, once my title sort of, I'll actually stretch the title to be a little faster there. Once my title wipes away and you see how easy that was. Like if I wanted to make the title shorter, I just literally dragged the end in. Uh, I will make the blurriness go back to zero like right around here so so we get this cool effect here where uh, we step into the intro to our film or video or whatever we're doing we do our title or or use one of these templates and then we slowly shift back into focus and okay that that was much too slow but so all i'll do is just drag those keyframes in closer a little bit and that's and it's cool interesting that you're putting the effect actually on the, the sorry the keyframes on the effect and you're not like changing the opacity of the effect coming in and out it's actually changing the amount of blurriness back and forth right right so there's a couple yeah like you can always like the mask opacity trick i i use is a little bit of an advanced trick because a lot of these they don't have opacity sections because it doesn't make sense like uh blurriness you just either have the strength or not but yeah you you do have options as well to like lower opacity of an, an effect but then you'd get more of like a dreamy look like for example if i duplicated the clip on top of itself and had one blurry and one not and made the opacity like half and half um Ooh. right we get this sort of dreamy look actually and that's actually a cool trick as well to use with the gaussian blur um just blending things together so now the dreamy look goes away but uh yeah, we're, we're definitely going to build a lot of custom effects. And if anyone has any cool ideas or comments or questions, 
just leave them for Andrew and I, maybe I can show you like, actually, yeah, you can combine it like this or that. Absolutely. Um, I've got so, the eagle eyes on the chat. I'm watching you right. chat. And so, so like a lot of people might think it's hard to, or what I was mentioning yesterday is that a lot of the differences between like someone who you'd say, wow, that guy's like a pro editor versus like something that just looks a little rough are the, are the little things like this. So, you know, as just starting out editing, you might just slap the text right on top of the video and that's the intro to your video. And then a nice little touch as you get to be a little bit more polished of an editor is something like this, which is a nice little touch, you know, just makes things more legible. And another trick I've used over time too is uh, the opacity. So if we toggle opacity, this will make the overall clip a little bit uh, less uh, less showing through so the text shows through and then we can bring it back to full. So one one uh, one really useful tip that I don't think we mentioned yesterday is this little button right here. Yes. Go to previous keyframe. So as you can see, I, like, I made a keyframe, but then I moved it to the beginning. Now I actually want to go back to that keyframe. So I click that and it'll just skip between keyframe points because I want to make this a little bit lower. Yep. I've made that mistake so many times that I'm trying to line up the timeline exactly on a keyframe. And then you end up generating another keyframe, like two frames before it. And then it gets all wonky. Using that little left and right is so helpful to actually like just jump from keyframe to keyframe as you're making edits. Right. Because if you're not careful, you might actually make two different keyframes, like yep. one frame apart and then wonder like, why is my effect acting crazy? Yep. And so, it's so hard to tell when you make another effect, like a frame in front of it. You're like, why isn't this working? You're like, oh no, it's all, it's my, it's my fault. It's all my fault. <laughs> right. And another tip I'll give people for like when they're working in these panels is like, don't forget to, you can zoom in and out. So sometimes you really got to zoom up into keyframes so you can see like the spacing between them and manipulate them. So another tip I'll give you is for this example, I want the clip to be a little bit dim all the way until the text sort of starts to go away. So what I can do is I can add another keyframe just by clicking this add keyframe button and it will add another keyframe at the current uh, strength or position. So then I can bring it back up to 100. You know, in this case, it, it's I guess it's a little redundant because you don't necessarily need the first keyframe, but it's, it's good to know sometimes uh, that if I didn't have this keyframe here, then we would slowly go from zero to full. Whereas I only want to begin doing that right here when the text goes away. So a, a little bit of a detail there, but those are the little things that, that help. Uh, and, it, and you're basically yeah, telling it to start at zero, stay to zero till this point, and then start making that movement. Right. Right. And there's more than one way to do that. Like, what I've done here, it, some people may say it's redundant, but sometimes uh, some workflow things like just make more sense or give you some flexibility. For example, like you could have, you could have done like a hold keyframe or something, and and then a linear keyframe. Um, but we'll get more into that, and and hopefully people will just piece the things together as we show more examples. So ultimately, yeah. So Gaussian blur. Uh, here's one idea with using keyframes to. I mean, think of a think of an actual camera. If you're like a videographer, photographer, like one of the most important things is focus in and out of focus. And it's nice to be able to manipulate that uh, with the Gaussian blur or just blur things in general. So going forward from that, one another one that we'll we'll do is the directional blur. So we'll change examples here to. I'll show you how to make like sort of an earthquake effect so Ooh, shaky right so so let's add a, a different clip here and what i'm going to do is go to this time my directional blur so now you should be pretty familiar with the idea of blurring from the previous one and the only additional power that you get here with directional blur is instead of just blurring vertically or horizontally you can blur through the whole uh, 360 degrees cycle. And the way that's represented here, uh, once you hit the whole 360 degrees, it'll say one X and then, you know, plus 18 degrees. So not to get confused there. And you'll see why, um, because 
we're going to add some keyframes. So let's start with just a, let's start with a blur length of like, I don't know. Let's just, let's start at zero first. No sometimes earthquake. We, we're going right. to be leveling up the Richter scale. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes when you build effects, you know, what what's going on in my head right now is like, I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to see which way to approach it, but let's just get started. And the nice thing is we can always um, go back and like patch things up. So the first idea that I've had in mind with this earthquake effect is we're going to utilize the fact that we can go through the whole 360 degree uh, angle cycle. And we're going to use that to do something crazy is we're just going to, we're going to make it rotate through this cycle like a lot. And you can almost already see like what's going on. Uh, and that's where the multipliers come into play, right. right? That it's like, oh, it's going this time, then this time, then this time, this time. Right. It's done 10 revolutions so far within these two keyframes. And if you want a little shortcut, you can just highlight that it's the text box. And like, I can just do 20 X and it'll just automatically do that. Um, so the first thing I'll have to do is I'll have to play it back to see how it is. Um, it might be too slow. Okay. Right. So th that's what's going on so far, but you'll see if I squeeze this in to like a really narrow amount and make it go through all those revolutions, we, we get this sort of earthquake effect that happens. Well, at least I think it looks sort of like a, like a shaking effect, like a vibration effect. Um, and uh, you can imagine using this on, I don't know, concert footage or any sort of like a, like a music video where there's like a really uh, impact or loud portion yep. to get this sort of shake. This yeah, reminds but, me of, and this is like a terrible, this is, I'm not recommending anyone to watch this movie because it like will literally destroy your life. So this movie, Requiem for a Dream, uh, there are sequences that are like very intense to where people are having like emergencies or like super focused. And it feels like that, that it's just like crazy shaky. Oh gosh, that's so disorienting. Yeah, that's a cool effect. Yeah. We're going to make people dizzy just like yesterday. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, but the other thing that uh, that you can play around with is the strength. So you can actually make it go. This is where I was going to say, let's, let's make it start at zero and like maybe have periods of uh, of shaking intenseness and then maybe go back to zero. So there there's like little tremors that are happening. And uh, that's what we've done here with this little three keyframe pattern, like zero strength zero and the cool part is i can copy and paste keyframes so i can highlight these three keyframes copy that little bunch move over and paste it so if we're going to read this sort of keyframe language it's like music or something uh what we have here is like two little tremors within this bunch of rotation movement so if we play that back we get like one and then like two now, it might not look like a super realistic earthquake, but it could be used, like you said, for a disorienting effect or a music video. It's and very uh, Jurassic Park, like the T-Rex is stomping toward us. Right, especially if you if you use uh, sound effects and things to, to supplement these sort of ideas. Um, and another thing I did is, here's a quick solution for you. If you notice in the Gaussian blur menu, it says repeat edge pixels. That's because when you blur things out, um, it sort of, it sort of starts to get these edge like transparencies because we've blurred out the corner and now there's nothing there. Yep. Uh, so in the case of directional blur, where there isn't an, a repeat edge pixels option, one thing we can do is just, just ever so slightly crop in. So use the scale position to just do like four pixels maybe, and you'll avoid any of that. Um, and like the difference between 100% and 104% is really hard to tell. So it's, it's always an option to get rid of those edge pixels. Um, but that's, that's with, uh, a, a cycling direction, but another option that you have with the directional blur is what if we just don't do any direction? What if we just keep it at one direction? Not like the band, just one oh, direction. I was so, I was like, so <laughs> ready to just wait for someone to say something. <laughs> Let's just keep it at 90 degrees and see what that looks like. So, okay. So now since, since a lot of that craziness was coming from the spinning motion, 
what we can do to bring back some of that intensity is squeeze these keyframes a lot closer together. So, right. So now if we, if we want to do some sort of like shaking effect, we might want to copy and paste these keyframes many times over in quick succession. So let me try like three of them real fast. And this is what that would look like. So three little like focus blurs. Oh yeah. Right. And, uh, that's like horizontally. You can also try, uh, 180. That would be embarrassing if I, uh, didn't, didn't get it. Sometimes you have to guess you're like, is it 90 degrees, 45 yeah. degrees? You know, there's so much more math in design than I ever thought there would be. Right. Actually, there's a video I made on my channel discussing that's like called like a, like math and video editing or something. And do you need to be good at math? And the interesting part is, in my opinion, although there is, although like almost everything in it is math, because like we said yesterday, it's it's like visual math that I don't yes. think that you necessarily need to be like a math genius or math was your favorite class because almost everything you can see it and math is sort of like a background. Like it just happens to be represented in. Yep. In and what's nice is if you don't know this, this is my, this is my hot tip. You guys can take this to the bank in most of the dialogue boxes for illustrator photoshop most adobe programs if you need to do the math on something you can actually just type it in and it will do the math for you i know this is the case in illustrator that if you're like oh it needs to be five eighths of an inch and i was like i don't know how much five eighths of an inch is you can literally do five slash eight and then it will convert it to the decimal for you so those of you that struggle with math just put it into a box and see if it will do the math for you right i'm pretty sure premiere does have that feature in in a lot of boxes it's magic um, I, i'm not quite sure if i can get it to work for this one but i i know that i've i've seen that tip before i think in after effects especially yep. you can just you can just say like divided by three and uh it'll do it for you um so yeah so th that's the gaussian blur and directional blur and those are two little uh those are a couple ideas on how to use for them and so as we keep the stream going uh, anyone that's watching or has comments that's what we're going to do for like this first portion. We're going to just take a nice tour, uh, load you up with some ideas on some of these key effects. And I guess we can call them like desert island effects. That should have been the name of this stream, like desert island effects. Yep. With Justin. That's it. Um, Justin, that's a great idea for a video. Just tune into Justin's channel where there's going to be a video that's desert island effects in the next few months. I'm going to make that. Mostly, it's, it's a yeah. great video. <laughs> Always just steal your titles from books like 1001 Effects You Must Know Before You Die. Yep. How to blank, 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 blank. Whatever. Just how to is on there. You're good to go. 101. Sweet. Yeah. There's a lot of that. All right. Okay. So the next effect that we're going to do is called, well, next we're stepping into the color correction tab. And again, these are just, oh, sorry. I skipped channel. These are just alphabetical order, by the way. So there's no like grand scheme of of how they're laid out. Um, but it sort of all makes sense. Channel, because there's only one effect in there, why don't we just you know show how to do it? Uh, and that is the invert effect. And channel you may be familiar with if you're I probably even Illustrator, Photoshop, like the this is like the color channel. It's simply inverting the color channel. But the cool part about the cha the invert channel effect is that in the effect control panel, you can actually choose which channel to invert. So this is what it looks like with the whole RGB invert. I'm sure you've seen, I'm sure you've seen these colors and this sort of vibe before. Yes. Um, probably like many old cameras like had something like this. Um, but the cool part about the channel effect in Premiere is you can actually invert specific channels. So you can invert the red color channel or the green color channel, the blue color channel, and you can even invert like different factors. So you can invert the hue, just overall like flip the hue on itself, getting these weird like ooh, like zombie land effects or something. Yeah, and, it's very uh, like Sin City. Yeah. Right. You can invert the lightness, you can invert the saturation, and uh, you can play around with all of these. And again, these are all like um, color theory, mathematically based or whatever. Yep. That saturation um, one looked very like Predator, like the Predator, uh, like hunting. That's that's it right there. Oh, yeah. It, it looks like a heat map or something. Yes. Yes. And the cool part is like this is a bit strong. You know, we're seeing some uh, like artifacting from from how much we've messed with the saturation. The cool part is you 
this also comes with the blend with original feature, which is sort of like an opacity, which you, you're starting to see is like a theme um, to keep in mind. So with this, you can blend it with the original. So if we go for like 66%, we could say like 33% of this has been color flipped. And actually, I think that's a that's kind of a neat effect. I can almost imagine this in like a... I'm going to say like a Radiohead music video or something, but yeah, I could see this in like, if we're shooting in like Tokyo with neons, like that could look really cool to get that futuristic kind of glow effect. Right. And, and actually, um, you bring up a good point. Like a lot of times it's fun to try what these effects will look like on different sorts of clips. So it might look one way here during like a sunrise, yes. but what if, what if we did a, nighttime clip this must be the shortest clip ever i must have just turned <laughs> the camera on and forgot it was on okay what if we did the same thing with like a nighttime clip and tried flipping it that way um we can we can get different vibes so we can we could just see what uh what different things will look like um and in this case i think because we like that's pretty cool it's like a, a vintage looking shadow yep I think because this is there's so much just black in here that black doesn't really uh like do any mathematics or, or whatever. But one other thing that I'll tie in with this is that like how you said, there's always two ways to do things. Um, although like we were using that example to to tell people, you know, to, to inspire some confidence. Another cool thing I would like to show people is just like all the power that you have at your fingertips, the invert effect like sort of does it for you in an easy way. But another really cool thing you can do is just, let's see, did I lower the saturation or, oh, I was so used to how cool it looked. That's um, so funny. Yeah. I, I thought the same thing. I was like, what effect is on there? And I'm like, oh no, it was just the regular right. shot. That's how it, it, it was. cool with that. But one other thing we can do is we can go to into the Lumetri Color panel. And I know this stream it hasn't been about Lumetri Color, but, you know, they're sort of like adjacent to the effect family. They're sort of like their own little family. But uh, I wanted to open up the Curves uh, tab, which is a really powerful tool. It's in Photoshop. I'm sure it's in Illustrator and everything. Um, but the Curves tab, I have a whole video on this if you're confused, is just sort of like a graphical representation of everything that we just did. Yep. So th this is the red, green, blue. This is just a red channel, blue, green channel, blue channel. And what the invert is doing is it's, if I could uh, explain this from scratch, what we have in the bottom left corner is like the shadows, the, the right side is the highlights. So, and the on the X and Y or, or on the vertical axis, we have like completely black or completely white. So that's why on the left, we have the shadows as completely black and on the right, the highlights as completely white. That's like one way I try to describe it. Yep. So if we just flip this line, uh, basically inverting it, if you'll notice, we get an, an invert. In right, we get an invert effect because we've flipped the red, green, blue color change. We've made the darks light and the lights dark. Um, but the cool part with what I wanted to say here is uh, the invert effect lets you do it once, but what if we added like a whole bunch of uh, banding ripples by yes. doing right by doing it like our own way? Now we can create these cool sort of like solarization effects, and we have a lot of flexibility and freedom over this. Um, and that looks kind of cool. It almost looks like a painting now, like we've turned it into like a stencil or something. Yeah, this reminds me of um. I'm just referencing movies like all the time. Did you ever see I Judge Dredd? Uh, and the... I love that I haven't seen any of the movies. <laughs> I know. Judge Dredd is, is awesome. And they have like this like substance or whatever that they take that's like this like smuggled drug or whatever. And it does this kind of effect in the film. Like everything gets like super shiny and it's this really cool. It just reminds me of that like psychedelic kind of vibe. Right. Um I have, I know that the movies are real because I've heard of a lot of them, but I just haven't <laughs> I'm, seen I'm going to start making up movies. That's definitely what's going to happen like, here. Yeah, this reminds me of uh, Tommy the Billy Cat. That's it. Three. Yep, Tommy the, the Billy the, Cat's three. <laughs> the Revenge. <Okay>. The classic. <laughs> the other cool thing that you can do in, in Curves, 
well, basically is that you have a curve for everything. So like, uh, although we did the whole red, green, blue color channel, um, if you ever just double click on anything, it resets it. Um, and it looks so boring without all those cool effects. Uh, but you know, you, this is actually how a lot of people create really cool color grading effects. So like yep. if, if we go to the blue color channel, we can lift some blues into the shadows, for example, and take some blues out of the highlights, which will make it more of like a yellow, like a creamy sky. Yep. If we're talking for like weddings in like 2010, like every wedding video that you see from 2010 has the cross processing of the blues going like down and up. So there's more yellows and a little less blue. Like that's right. every wedding video. It's like the Instagram, like there's the Nashville effect. It very have. much is. Yep. But even just like, um, like, uh, you know, a lot of times, okay, now we've made this, it's now shot on Mars, you know, we've made it look like, uh, like it's, uh, like we changed the whole scene here. Now it's like a lot more of like a sunny, like vibe almost. So, yep. and the best example that I have of this is the matrix. Uh, like the matrix is the greatest example of using these curves because it literally was just like little more green, little more purple, the matrix. Right. Um, right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and many movies they, they, and I have lots of videos and, and things like going over this, but yeah, if you want like a uh, more of a matrix vibe, like I'd have to, yeah, you just sort of like put some green into it yep. and, and then like, and maybe add some contrast and you're immediately like more matrixy, but yep. I would recommend everyone to check out this really great feature that was recently put into Premiere um, called uh, color match. I have a video on it, but speaking of like the matrix, you can basically bring two clips together. So you can even take like a screen grab from like uh, a movie where you like the colors of it. And then you could take your clip and then all you got to do is click apply match and it will try to apply exactly how the colors on the left are to the right. Yep. Um, yeah. So in this case, I mean, it's just making them match because I mean, they're shot on the same camera anyway. Yep. But and it's so helpful when you have reference of a film that you like or a photo that you're inspired by. Uh, and you can do this in Photoshop too. There are ways to do that in Photoshop as well. But being able to just have the reference and then one click kind of match those tones uh, is so cool to really get a vibe that you're going for and kind of just pull straight from your mood board onto your footage or onto your photo. Right, exactly. And uh, yeah, so we can just close comparison view, but check definitely look check that out on my channel i have a nice concise video i mean i have a video on everything but like curves <laughs> color match i even have a how to do like the matrix type of effect but we're getting a little bit sidetracked into lumetric color i mean there's just so much cool stuff built in here and especially like i think they've really been adding a lot of cool stuff especially like that color match feature is a game changer yep um, but yeah if you're interested in lumetric color like that's uh great stuff in there whole different playlist you can check out all that color grading is awesome but that's because we were in the channel and color correction family of, of effects and so hopefully now you have a little bit more information uh or like education on what's actually going on here it's just sort of doing it for you in this simple plug-in way so yep just flipping color channels and uh uh well, let's actually make an effect with it. How about that? So oh, yes, yeah, let's go back to our home base, back to effects, back on track. Let's make it happen. Right. So one cool thing I've done here uh, with with these effects before is uh, creating like a flash transition sort of effect. So, OK, let me see if I can pull it up uh, in my from my effects pack. Uh, so one cool effect that I've created using this invert effect and I'll, and I'll explain how is I've made a flash, like a flash transition using invert. So traditionally, you know, you have, I'll just show everyone, you have your dissolve to white or dip to white, right? This is an easy one. Like if I add a dip to white transition and also remember from day one, I just uh, search dissolve or I just searched the keyword that I wanted because I knew it was in the dissolve folder and I just opened uh, dip to white. Now, here's one thing I, sh I think I should point out just for anyone watching, because a lot of people think that this is an error message, but it's not. Um, so I think we should take a, br <laughs> a brief detour to like explain this. Yes, this is Premiere basically telling you it's your fault. If you're like, why isn't this working? It's saying like, hey, it's probably your fault. <laughs> no, actually, everything is working here. Fine. Nothing is yes. isn't working. It's sort of just like a 
information box. So it's saying yep. in, insufficient media. It's just letting you know this transition is like once you get to the end of your clip, uh, we're just going to like repeat the still frame and that's how we're going to transition them into each other. And the reason it's doing that is because we've used two whole clips. So like this is from the very beginning of this clip to the end of this clip. So there is no frames after that. So if it wants to transition them together, it's just going to sort of like freeze frame the end and freeze frame the beginning of the other. It still looks fine. And you'll see that this transition marker has like slash through. It's like a has like a crisscross pattern that happens to it Yep. to, to let you know that we've we've freeze framed it. It's almost impossible to even tell, but you can see right when it gets to this point, actually with the dip to white, like it's almost like irrelevant. Yep, because um, that middle where it's getting cut is technically white, but it's already dipped to white, so you can't tell. <laughs> right. If I do additive dissolve, or if I do a dissolve, you'll see it. So you see when the car video comes in, it's static. And then when the, the building video goes out, it's sort of static. And that's why I think this isn't a big deal to worry about. Um, but I'm actually going to use it as a, a moment to give you guys a cool bit of uh, information that you might not know about see if i stretched it out you can see you can sort of really see what's going on and that's totally fine actually the effect kind of looks cool but it only happens because we're at the end of a clip so here's something that i actually didn't know about premiere for the longest time and this is this goes into what we were saying yesterday how like almost everything like there's almost like a little symbol like that tells you what's going on for everything but we just ignore it it's like uh all the lights in your car that are on so <laughs> how did you know <laughs> premiere yeah just get in and drive <laughs> premiere actually tells us that this is the beginning of the clip because this little white triangle have you ever known like have you ever thought like why is that little white triangle on the end of the clip um that lets us know that this is the actual start of the clip if i cut this clip like if oh. i cut right so if i cut this clip and take a little slice from it uh you could see this cut of the the middle of the clip doesn't have any triangle on the beginning or end so this lets you know this is the actual beginning there's nothing i can stretch out further left this one however lets you know there's more stuff to the left because we haven't reached that little cap and there's more stuff to the right because we haven't reached that little cap i had no idea that is such a little tidbit of knowledge that will be so helpful to me <laughs> Right. And uh, I'm just using command Z edit undo to like undo steps. But yeah, actually, that's something I didn't realize for the longest time um, that it tells you that. Uh, and basically, I say all that to say that if Premiere did have like, you know, a lot of times you're not editing with like full solid little clips like I'm using. You're using bits and pieces of longer shots to transition. And so when you do add a transition, uh, in between two clips like this. Um, and you see, it didn't give me any message because it does have that extra couple frames because there's more to stretch out from. So it doesn't need to tell us anything. And uh, if we do a dissolve, it'll, the only difference you'll notice is that like, as the videos dissolve, their the frames are moving rather than still frame. Yep. So, right. So a lot of people, like, I think, think that that's an error or they're doing something wrong and it's really just a piece of information that premiere is, is telling you i think that's you know maybe if i was in charge of premiere design i would change it to like uh like a cute box so it lets you know like this isn't an error you know like just make <laughs> it, it like pops a little up, pop up yeah yep. yeah there's like a little adobe mascot it's like hey just want to let like you know nice. yeah yep. Um, I'll, I'll do the voiceover Adobe people. If you, you, yeah, you need a little right. yeah, voiceover for a mascot. All right, if anyone in the chat is is looking for a position on the team. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyways, um, yeah, I love taking little detours like that because uh, in in my opinion, the way I always explain things is like, um, like how do you start learning? You just try to make a whole project from start to finish, and like as you do things like everything sort of connects all from one way to the other like into each other so anyways what we were doing is we were going to make an invert transition and what i was showing you is that one way to make a flash transition is using dip to white and instead of keeping it at the normal transition length 
squeezing that transition in so it happens really quickly. So what we get there is sort of a flash, cool, a cool flash transition, right? And that's actually perfectly fine. It's a nice transition, easy to do. But one thing I've done with the invert effect is I've, I'll show you here in my preset pack, which as we said in the first stream, if you want to skip all this uh, custom work, uh, I do <laughs> I do offer presets for sale on my website shop, justinodshow.com slash shop. Uh, but I also have some free resources on there as well. But, uh, and also the one thing I like to tell everyone is I do offer it for sale, but I probably have a tutorial on how to do all of this step by step if you want to take the time. And I have videos and we just taught yesterday how to make your own presets as well. So you have all the options. So what I've done here is an invert flash. So I'll, I'll put the clip, put it on each clip and we'll play through it just to show you what happens here. As you can see, it's it's like uh it's sort of like our dip to white, but it's a lot cooler because we've used we've inverted channels to make the flash. Yep. That is so 1992 MTV, like that is a hundred percent that vibe. Right. And if if I if I break down uh, the DNA of this effect, um all we've done is we've used keyframes. So uh let me actually just make it from scratch for you. That that was the preset, but let me make it from scratch. It's quite simple. We're, we're just going to grab the invert tool. And since we're pros, we're just going to search invert. You don't have to do all that clicking around and find the channel invert. Click and add it on there. We're going to add a keyframe for the channel. And we're going to add a keyframe for blend with original. And we're going to start at 100% blend. And then we're going to move forward and make it 0%, 100%. And we're just sort of going to alternate between zero and a hundred and maybe do this like five or six times. Um, and the other cool thing that you can do here is uh, you can experiment with making them hold keyframes as well. Um, so that way they don't uh, linearly progress and they just sort of flash on and off. And the sort of pro tip trick that I did to make it look a little more cool, if you you might not have caught it is I also animated the channel. So instead of just keeping it as RGB the whole time, I made it switch. So sometimes it flips the red channel. Sometimes it flips the green channel. And so you get like this cool bit of effects going on. Oh, and interesting. So it's flickering while it's flipping through effects to give that really chaotic look. Right. So, I mean, I, I fine tuned it. So maybe, maybe this one's going to look a little too crazy, but, uh, if I press play now, a little slow, but basically I did that. I did that on the start of that clip, or sorry, at the end of that clip. And then I did the same thing on the start of this clip. Um, this time just at the beginning, just create a couple flashes. That's and cool. And it looks like it's one effect, but it's actually two effects that are bumped up against each other, right? Right. It's actually, uh, it's the same effect, but because we're creating our own custom transition. Whereas with the with the dip to white, because that's built into Premiere like that, we can just drag it in between the cuts. With this, because we're, we're just sort of like creating it with the power of keyframes, we're just making it uh, at the end of a clip and the beginning there. And so therefore it just sort of like creates its own in between the cut thing. Um, and so, yeah, but at the end, we just want to make sure that we blend it 100% back with the original and you know, this is where I, I sat there and I played around with what I thought looked cool when I made the preset, but this is exactly sort of the process that I used. And let me just make it way faster and maybe flip them to hold keyframes. And, and I feel like usually that. if I'm doing effects on videos and it doesn't look authentic enough or whatever, it's just because it's not fast enough, right? That I've gone to my technical brain and I'm like, okay, it needs to transition here to there to there. And just compressing things usually solves that problem. That it's like, oh yeah, that's the effect I want. I just need to be faster. Right, if it, if, if it looks off, just, just make it so fast that nobody could tell it looks off. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. We're gonna give you the idea of this effect. Right, like if your eyes can't see it, then, then it didn't mess up. So yeah, look, I just made everything faster and boom, we created that cool invert flash effect. And, you know, the the power of, do, of of understanding effects and having like 
the ability to do keyframes and, and understanding that you can do the mask and the options is that you're now all of a sudden you're not just limited to like cross dissolve, dip to black, dip to white. Now you have like unlimited uh, possibilities and to blow your brain even more like why not add a dip to white too? You know, like the, you can, there's no rules, right? You can on top of everything also add like a, a little extra transition or like dissolve or whatever you want. And that's actually how I've made a lot of cool effects is starting with one of the base effects like we did yesterday and then adding a blur or adding something else. Yep. And, and that's kind of the theme that we've talked about throughout the stream all day yesterday and probably more today is effects are kind of meant to be stacked. You can't just like put one effect on one thing. By going in, augmenting, stacking more effects, you can get really interesting results that don't look stock, even though they are just stock that's stacked on top. Right, and uh, and even if you don't stack them, at least like uh, you always have the option to add keyframes or mess with the masking and opacity. So blending them, you know, the, the same way in anything, like when you, if you were to, if you're a painter and you wanted to paint a painting like you don't just throw the the straight color you blend the color you sort of like finesse it into the video and it's yes. the same way with effects so i'm having so much fun here but we gotta maybe uh okay we got we got more we got about an we, hour left and we've right. got like what six folders to get through <laughs> right we got to pick up the pace a little Let's bit do actually. It. i should have just began doing this yesterday we, we had so many like basics to go over but sure so Let's next go to the color correction folder. So actually within the color correction folder, you have the whole Lumetri color panel, but just go to the Lumetri color panel and make your life easier. Uh, one really cool one that I like for the Lumetri color panel is the tint effect. And I think we slightly went over this yesterday, but the tint effect is a great way to do sort of like, if you're familiar with Photoshop, what gradient maps do. It just maps one, it maps the black or the dark colors to one color and then the whites or the lighter colors in the video to another color. So if you wanted to do a black to white, this is a really simple way to do it. Um, that can always look great. And if you wanted to do a, a different combination of effects, so like maybe a dark blue to white, you can also do it this way. Uh, and it's just a fun way to get two tone effects. Like uh, one thing, uh, like you remember those uh, I think like iPod commercials or, or like a lot of like music commercials. They'll yep, have Spotify's branding. Yeah, right. They'll have two tone effects like this. Um, you do have the like strength feature. So this is 100%. Um, and this is another cool one where uh, if you want to like it's it's great for title screens. If you want to throw that like a, the same title, some title over top of this, uh, it can look cool when you when you make like a two tone background to, to sort of take people's eyes off the back and make it a cool title splash. Um, or sometimes you can even use it as a cool like coloring effect because you can lower the 100% down to something a little lower. And now we, we've got the same sort of matrix ideas or like if we made it orange, we could get more of a dusky looking effect uh, without going into all that complicated color grading curves that can confuse people. Yep. Um, we just simply do like a gradient map and adjust the strength of it and get a little bit more of a tone or tint that we want. Yep. And I'm going to do another movie reference here. Uh, 500 Days of Summer. It's a little niche with Joseph. That Joseph one I've Joseph seen. Okay, cool. So uh, 500 Days of Summer, I think, did this to where they tinted the entire movie like by seasons, depending on what was happening in the movie. And I, I can't find, I'm trying to find it somewhere on another screen, uh, but there's like a kind of show of all the different frames in the movie and how the color story like goes through the film. And I think it's that, but they toned it so that it almost looks like it's going through a year through the tones of the film, which I think is really interesting to do. Right. And really color can affect the mood of the, the scene so much. And yes. I'm sure like for a I'm sure you're like for a full movie, you're not just gonna be like, okay, just use the tint effect. But you can you can start with like a tint and then you can you can still go into the Lumetri color panel and do other things to it. Like I wouldn't just toss it out just because it's not like in the Lumetri color suite. Uh it's still a, a great tool for, for fun effects and like two tone effects. Um and uh one thing that I was going to say, like we brought it up yesterday, but we haven't brought it up today, 
is let's not forget the power of using adjustment layers. So if you highlight your project panel and go to file new adjustment layer, uh, you can actually apply effects onto adjustment layers and drag them over top of many scenes. So rather than just applying the tint on there, and what I'll do here is I'll just press command C, just like the copy shortcut or right click and copy it. And then instead of pasting them on effects, I can just paste it on an adjustment layer. And then this adjustment layer can tint like my whole sequence on top of even like that invert effect that we did. So we can, we don't have to just tint individually. Like you said, maybe there's a whole segment that we want to look a little bit more yellowish or something. Yep. And going back to the matrix again, we're going to use that again, because I think it's an easy reference. Uh, the matrix would use that green tint that it's so famous for. It would only use that when they were in the matrix, when they were in the real world, it didn't have that green tint over it. And so when we're talking about kind of adjustment layers being over sections, that's a great use case that it's like, Hey, all these scenes are in the matrix. Let's put that green tint over those. And then they're back in the real world. Okay, cool. Let's take it off. Right. That it's just that adjustment layer over an entire area instead of doing every clip with a custom effect that would get really tiring really fast. I never, I've never put that together, but uh, that's, that's interesting. It's like spoiler alerts. It's like when you watch the movie over the second time. And yes. Uh, so, uh, and this is completely off the rails, but uh, I got to see <laughs> the newest matrix. So when they just came out, I saw it like a year before it came out and it was like an early cut. It was like a test screening and they hadn't done any color toning yet. And so we watched and the effects weren't done and whatever. And so we were watching it and I was like, it is so crazy to see how much of a difference, like a little bit of a color makes, right? That it's like, oh, it doesn't feel like a Matrix movie. And it's like, oh, it's because it doesn't have any of the green or the blue or the, like, if it's not color graded, it feels like it's a home movie, which is so weird. Uh, and it shows you how much these effects can do to just simple film to make it look like it is this experience and to convey kind of an emotion. Right, definitely. Um, and uh, so, okay, so so I'm sure we're gonna bring up more movie references. But let's just skip ahead now to the distort folder. Now I will say, let's just plug stream one real quick. If you missed stream one, one of the ones that we used as like a primary starting example was the wave warp. So just go check out the replay for that for wave warp. And we also went into mirror as well, which was a useful one. Um, so another fun one I'll show you is uh, like the twirl effect. Um, let's use something a little more static like this. And if we add the twirl effect on here, uh, the twirl effect simply, I mean, it does what it says it does. Uh, it's a twirl effect. Ooh. Right. And you can adjust the, the radius of it and also the uh, angle of it. So um, you can you can put it on like, like it looks cool here because it's a glass object. So you're sort of bending glass. Uh, and as you play it, Again, you get this sort of like, Whoa. like it's almost like that melting clock painting. Yes, yeah. that's so cool. Right. I mean, the so, people that are tuning in yesterday and today are in for a treat of just like the psychedelicness of both of these streams. They've both been pretty <laughs> wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I would say like I'm showing off like all of the power of the effects to the extreme. You know, when you're making your video, um, maybe you'll just do like a flash transition here or a little push here. You know, not everything has to have all of these crazy effects, but the options are there for you. Um, but I would say for the distort folder, you know, again, wave warp is one of the coolest effects, but go check that out. Uh, check check out stream one. We, we started with wave warp and we showed some pretty cool effects. Um, I guess I'll show one little, uh, one little trick you can steal that I didn't show in day one with just a quick combo uh, of wave warp and, and we'll also do a posterized time. So wave warp, you know, it automatically adds a wavy animation. You don't have to do any keyframes with it. That's why I think it's one of the most powerful uh, fun effects in Premiere. It just automatically does the wave. And then what, what, what I'll do is I will add a posterized time effect. Here's just like a little fun recipe you can steal. Uh, wave warp plus in the time folder, posterized time and this sort of creates like a first we have to actually posterize the time so posterize time i'll put it after the wave warp and then posterize it to like three frames per second 
this actually, oh, maybe I got to do it this way. Okay. So put posterize time after, and then this creates sort of like a fun, like, like a jiggly, like animation effect. If you, if you sort of get the vibe that I'm going yep. for, like, uh, you've, I'm sure people you've seen this sort of thing, like a, like a stop it's, motion. And yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, it's the very like stop motion paper cut kind of sizzle. Yeah. Right. And, and you can do different sort of, uh, different waves and effects, but I've used this. It's like a fun effect. Like, let's say you want to do a pop-up on, on a title or a video. And sometimes it can be boring to, to just be like, here it is. You know, sometimes it's fun. It keeps the viewer's attention to, to have the text dance a little bit. So this is a fun, like dancing text effect that you can make. Um, but we're going to skip over the going into it more. If you want more wave warp, more disturb, we covered a lot of that in part one, but that's just like a fun little quick recipe. It got crazy. Uh, yeah. So before we hop on to the next one, we do have a question from chat that I want to ask you. Um, so someone's asking, what is a piece of film or a movie or YouTube project or something that is really inspiring to you? Or maybe like made you want to become a video editor? Like, is there anything that's constantly in the back of your brain as like, this is the inspiration that like got me here? Sure. So there wasn't ever like one single inspiration, but back when I was a lot younger, so I, I started editing like maybe like 13 years ago. I don't know, maybe when I was like 16 or something. Um, and I used to, I used to be really into like playing games and people would make these crazy edits with like all the best gaming footage. I mean, nowadays it's like all professional esports and this is like a whole industry, yep. but I just remember people would do like the craziest things and like, you know, zoom out in 3d and like spin around and then whoosh back in and all these zooms and things that are so popular. Uh, and those I thought were really cool. And I, and I, I always liked making graphics and things like that. So I got my start just like thinking those were cool, watching them on online and the internet. So it might not always have to be like, a, you know, I mean, the matrix was awesome too, but it, it might not always be like some Hollywood thing. Maybe there's just like a YouTuber that you really like that, yep. that makes really cool videos and you just love the way that they, they put things together. And uh, maybe it's even sim maybe like it's a cooking channel that you like and they do like quirky dancing text like I just showed and you just like their style, you know, yep. so you can get inspiration from anywhere. No, no, I did. I did get inspiration. Yep. But uh, yeah, but then throughout the years, you know, I, I like once you once you start, once you learn how to add it, I think it's like riding a bike. And then now, yeah, I pull inspiration from like everywhere I see like movies and TV, like a lot of times for ideas that I make for my videos, like I'll have seen it randomly in like an Instagram ad or like a TV commercial or something like that, you know? Yep. Uh, all right. So we're on four point gradients. It's funny because I literally just recorded a tutorial in illustrator about doing four point gradients. So here we are again, let's learn about them here in premiere. <laughs> right. So there's a lot of crossover probably, but this is a, uh, we did cover, oh, sorry. This is one that four four color gradient and ramp. I'll probably I'll put them like together, sort of. These are like the only the only ways to create gradients and generate things. There's also one other thing I'll mention is uh, you can always highlight and go to File New Color Mat or Black Video, and this is another way that you can create like solid color pieces of media for you to use, and they show up in your project media bin, and you can use those again, maybe for like title screens or blending purposes, which I'll show you really quick. Like if I take this blue color mat and put it on multiply blending mode on this clip, it sort of acts like a, a blue uh, lens filter or something, yep. which can be fun. Um, but along with that, you have ramp, which is like a gradient. So same idea, but you can do, you can do it with a ramp uh, and then you can this is where I would actually, I would probably do this on like a new black video or color mat. So if I go to file new black video, just grab this sort of like blank video. This is where I would, sometimes I like to generate ramps or gradients just so I don't put them on a clip. Maybe I'll need the clip. Yep. And this is where you can like create a, create a ramp and then maybe like one thing I've done is create a light leak effect. So uh, 
making like a red uh, gradient ramp, making it start a little bit more horizontally. And uh, if we one quick tip from day one is sometimes it can be awkward to adjust things with sliders. So if you ever highlight the uh, parameter that you're trying to adjust and click on your selection tool and make sure you're in your program window, you should be able to see these blue markers go up. And this sometimes is a lot easier to achieve what you're trying to do. As you can see, yep. I'm, just, I'm trying to squeeze in like a gradient on the left-hand side, uh, which would probably be tedious with sliders. We're getting those, uh, gosh, JJ Abrams, Michael Bay, light flare, kind of light leak dream sequence. Right. And, and I could just use simple blending mode tricks, like put it on color dodge or screen and play oh, around with it. Done. Yep. And play around with the color a little bit. Uh, and the cool part about this, like, there you go. There's like a cool light leak, you know? And the cool part about this is I can imagine you can also like animate it to like grow over the whole image or something like that using keyframes. Um, but that's one fun thing you can do with the generate filter. Um, sorry, the generate ramp filter. And then I was going to say with like a four color gradient, if we just keep it on normal, uh, we can adjust from the standard colors. And one idea I've shown with this is blending together like a lot of colors in a cool way. And funny enough, actually going back to our wave warp effect, I've added a wave warp effect onto uh, like a cool four color gradient and then just pin all the edges up and just increase the like make like a cool wave. Don't don't rip the don't rip the layer in half. But uh, <laughs> you never want to rip the layer. But because this automatically animates, let's uh, scale it up a little bit. Let me slow it down a little bit too. So oh, cool! Of, of one point. right. So this is almost something that this is something that you might initially be like, I need After Effects to create this sort of thing. Um, but you can create cool, like soft backgrounds, almost probably like something that you'd see in the background of this very stream we're doing right now on Adobe Live. Yep. Um, you see stuff like this all the time. And this can be also great uh, to then go ahead and, and create like bounding boxes and put other videos inside. So um, just because we're in Premiere and it's not traditionally what you think of, like Photoshop or After Effects doesn't mean that we're still not very capable to do a lot of creative outside of the box things. Like I could imagine making a YouTube end screen with something like this yep. or some There's sort so of... much room for opportunities. Right. And uh, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm just sharing like all my, all my recipes, all my cookbook tips and tricks here. And I hope people can like just pick and choose which ones uh, come to mind. A lot of these I've, I've made videos on and, they've come to my mind after like experimenting, like every day I would wake up and just try to experiment and come up with all these. So a lot of these have stuck to in my head. So um, yeah, you have ramp, gradient, uh, ramp and four color gradients. But again, notice how I'm constantly going back and mixing things. Uh, and we've created with the wave warp on top of the four color gradient, we've created this cool like undulating background Whenever yep. you have the chance to use the word undulating, undulating, you got to use it. <laughs> yes. We used a couple yesterday too, that were pretty good ones. I think we threw in penultimate <laughs> is one of my oh, yes, favorites. Yes. It's, there's, there's some good ones. Yeah. And you know, steal like, or, 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 or always remember what we did previously. Like what if we took the same concept from making the text dance and did a posterized time on top of this same concept? Like uh, now maybe we can make like a dancing jittery background in this case maybe it doesn't look as fun but just remember like everything ties in together with each other yep okay so we've covered a good amount of ground now and uh we're, we already covered black well black and white we already covered it uh yesterday and we that's another point is like there's always two ways to do things maybe three ways. There's always many ways to achieve the same results. So yep. And there's no right or wrong way for those watching at home. There's no right or wrong way to design, to create whatever. There's just different ways. So if you're watching Adobe live and you're like, oh, I've done this different. I must've been doing it wrong the whole time. If it's the way that you like it and the outcome is the way that you want it to be, 
then it's the right way. There's no right or wrong way. It's just different ways. Absolutely. And one thing like people might think, well, well, like, why would I want to three different ways to do something? It's, it's actually really useful because, you know, sometimes you need to do something with one way. Sometimes another way offers you a little bit more flexibility. It's really nice to like, like we said with the invert tool, be able to do things in the invert panel, or if we want, we can also go and do it in, in the Lumetri color and, and have different flexibilities. Yep. And if you run into a wall and you're like, I don't know why this isn't working. Like something's not checking out, whatever you can completely scrap it and be like, cool, I'm going to try another way. Cause I know how to do this three ways. And maybe the problem that's happening or the error that I've made isn't going to happen in the other workflow. Right. And so you can just cycle through and problem solve having all these different ways to do things in your back pocket. Right. So I'm going to skip over the image control section. Again, if anyone wants full every single effect explained, I have a playlist called Every Effect Explained. Um, but the next one we have is Immersive Video. These are some of the, some really cool, more recent additions to Premiere. And these incorporate some like VR. I think I might be wrong, but it's also almost like some After Effects powered stuff. Uh, I, may be, I may be wrong there, but these have some of the coolest ones in there, such as digital glitch. So VR digital glitch. And you'd think like an effect like this with the chromatic aberrations and whatnot, um, you can make it, it with like many different layers. And like we said, splitting those color channels apart. Um, but why do that when you can just literally add it here, you know? Yep. And for those that are watching that are curious, what are chromatic abrasions? Because we actually referenced them yesterday as well. What does that mean? Sure. So you see these little like red and green, blue. If I zoom in here a lot, you see these like little splitting of the color channels. Um, as far as the actual term chromatic, well, aberration just means like distortion or like, you know, not normal thing. Uh, and chromatic, I, I don't know if that's in reference to like how it used to happen on specific cameras or, or monitors. But in this case, we're just referencing this, the splitting of the color channels here. So the, yep. the little red, green, and blue sort of yellow. And if actually, if we tie it in with what we were talking about earlier, um, this sort of stuff is happening because of color theory, because they're just sort of splitting the image, the color channels of the image, and it's creating this fringing effect. Yep. Which can look really cool. Um, and and the best way that this has ever been implemented is uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. They did the chromatic abrasions and they did halftone abrasions. And so it becomes a stylistic look to where you can see the offset colors, but then it has the comic book kind of feel. Uh, and so anytime you're doing anything that looks like vintage or comic booky, kind of separating those chromatic abrasions usually give you the right effect. Right. Oh, and uh, I got to turn on GPU acceleration, so maybe I'm not going <laughs> to. That's how I'm you know we've gotten too it. deep into, into yeah. effects is like, oh, we're going to need a little extra power here. Yeah, no, uh, it's just something in the preferences. But uh, you can actually, um, uh, yesterday, if you go back to yesterday's stream, stream we showed like a cool uh, way that you can add a checkerboard effect uh, and, and set it on a blending mode um, right now. It's the, a lot of the VR effects require GPU acceleration. So it's just a setting you got to turn on in the preferences. Yep. But uh, yeah, the this is a really cool effect and it's great that you can just do it just like this. And you also have the option to Ooh. just like everything, right? Just like everything else, you can animate it or this one has cool like distortion features. So not only you can turn the chromatic aberration or in this case, it's, it's called color distortion. A lot of things I think in, in editing, you know, we just like use one word and, and just uh, use one word for everything. Oh, yeah. But um, you can also just use, you can also just do regular like actual distortion of the pixels. So that's a cool one. And a lot of these, I think, are meant that you can apply them onto 360 or VR videos if you've ever shot with like a 360 cam. Oh, interesting. Um, right. So that's why when you put them on, you'll notice uh that that they sort of like um i forgot the word for that but oh yeah it's like wrapping yes they sort I of totally polarize or spherize at the top and bottom there's a word for it in photoshop i um, think it's polarizing right i think it's because uh well a lot of these are made so that you can actually apply them onto 360 images and, and they'll look normal 
um, th thus why they're called immersive video and VR. But I've had uh, I've had no problem just you know using them because they're so powerful just on regular clips. I don't see why not, you know. Yep. Uh, aside from some GPU things that sometimes no wrong way to do things. Might run into. Yeah. So a lot of cool stuff in there, and it's it's relatively newer, so that's fun. Uh, and then next we have keying. Okay. Yes, so and this gonna... is actually a question that came up yesterday. Uh, someone had asked about keying stuff out. So if you're watching and you're that person, let us know in chat. We're about to answer your question. <laughs> right. So this, I'd say, if if we're going to be talking about desert island effects again, keying. Like, if I was to break down how almost any effect is done, it's usually some combination of masking, keying, and then something else. You know. So. Uh, there's a couple of cool ones, you know, ultra key is probably your go-to and this is like, if you have a green screen video, if I add ultra key and I choose the color green, I mean, green screens are going to be like a really bright green. Uh, I can simply choose the color that I want to key out or basically like exclude or remove. And I can increase, like I can adjust the tolerance of it, which is you know, how close to the screen does it have to be this exact pixel shade of green or like everything within that family. And like I said yesterday, although it looks it's appearing to be just black, uh, we actually can turn on uh, yesterday. I didn't do it because my webcam was in the way, but this time I'm going to do it. It's right here. Transparency grid. Uh, and if you want to see oh. like the actual transparency grid that we're used to. And we can play around with it. And this means that we've cut out the green portions of this image, which in this case is like the trees. So if I were to put another clip underneath, uh, it will blend the two together. So, and if you all are looking for a live version of that, I'm going to give myself away right now. That's what Chroma King does, right? That's perfect. <laughs> Actually, that's a better example than I have. Um, so yeah, there's green screens, there's blue screens, but, uh, Ultra key is just a nice all all around keying tool because it has a lot of different options for cleanup and tolerance and all of those things. Um, but another cool one you have is Luma key. And uh, this Ooh, what's a Luma key? I've never heard about a Luma key. Sure. So Luma, it's like luminance, which comes from the Greek or some sort of word. I don't know. But Lu Luma means like brightness or like lightness or something. So Luma is is uh, dealing with like the light or dark or luminance of an image. And if we adjust the threshold of this, so like, let's say I wanted to replace the sky. Let's say I want to replace the sky from this clock tower video we were working with because there's a clear separation of contrast. Um, and it's not going to be perfect. You, this works much better for like things that are perfectly, you know, light and dark. I can sort of isolate out the sky as you can see from, oh, interesting. The, from the buildings. And we might want to also go in there and like what I've done in the past is combine this with masking. So because this is because this is a static shot, I can I can first give myself a good uh, opacity mask on roughly like everything I want to get out, such as this. And I'll click invert. And then I can also add a Luma key to, to get to those hard to reach places that I don't want to do by hand. And this can be like a really quick way to do a sky replacement. So in this case, we've removed the previous sky and we've made it out to be like blurry lights and stuff. So I'll probably go in there and adjust a little bit of the, maybe adjust the cutoff amount. You, you can sort of tweak it and fine tune it. Um, yeah, but in this case, it perhaps wouldn't be the best because some of the clock tower is too much being removed. But actually what I can do there is uh you can still combine masks. I'm not going to I'm not going to spend too much time perfecting this one. But here I could do like the same thing with masking. But if yep. you want to I have a full tutorial on that. But uh Luma key keys out based on brightness. Of course, this clip wasn't uh, yeah, that's one thing I'll say with with keying is like typically it works best if you're using a green screen or something that was made with the intention of keying it out after so that you don't have so much trouble with like clouds or something. Yep. Uh, so 
moving on now uh, also a really good, another really cool one is track mat key but that's that's like a whole separate video you should oh yeah track, track matting is very advanced and i think at some point we'll cover track matting uh on our pro tips show so pro tips happens on fridays and it's like super advanced stuff and i'm sure track matting needs to happen uh and maybe we'll have you back on just to cover track matting but it is it is advanced 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 but right it, but it's really cool. fun yeah, yeah so so track mat actually it's, I wouldn't even scare people and say it's like so advanced, but a cool thing I've done with it is like text inside of video. It, this yes. is how you put text inside of video. Um, but I've done a lot of videos on that. So let's let's head over to next up is just noise and grain um, because there's only one thing in here. It's noise. It's noise. noise. It's like the corn thing. It's noise. It's noise. <laughs> noise um, is my my favorite. So I grew up in uh like leave it to beaver like i grew up on old black and white shows and so any video that i make that is like stylistic has so much noise on it uh because i want that like old gritty vintage effect right and speaking of we can even add like a black and white effect yes. on here and uh what we showed yesterday with one way that i used noise was to make a, a more vintage camera film feel and there is still a couple options with noise. So you have the amount of noise. I guess I, I, I misspoke when I said wave warp was the only thing that comes animated because noise also comes animated, which is nice. So you yes. can use color noise or black and white noise and, you know, 100% all the way to lower. I'm sure actually it looks a little bit different on the on the stream. These sort of things are yep. hard. To, these sort of things are hard to see when you scale them down. But trust me. We, we got some delicious noise and it's making things look a little Crunchy. bit more retro. Yep. And go ahead. Uh, I was going to say another great thing that you can do with noise is if you're compositing things together or like something is off, if you throw some noise on it, you can usually hide a lot of that stuff. Uh, having noise on top of multiple clips, on top of composites, just make it look a little more like it's one shot. And so if it's not vibing, throw some noise on it and 100% I guarantee that it will look like it's one shot together. Absolutely. Actually, that's a trick I use in Photoshop all the time. Like oh, you, oh, yes. Yeah. If you've edited something and like there's seams or something, like just throw a little film grain on top. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so yeah, yesterday what we showed here was how to do both a VHS effect, which I'll just show you like the final look. Uh, and this involves using noise and also a bunch of other things. And then we also did like a Super 8 film camera look where a lot of the impact of getting that old camera look was by introducing noise to it. So yep. let me turn that transparency. Yeah, a lot of that impact um, is added in there with the, the the noise grain. So cool, powerful tool. It's also comes pre-animated. So those are some fun ones. And then moving on, we're almost probably wrapping up here. Well, we still got 30 minutes, so I think we're making good pace. Um, obsolete. So why is it called the obsolete oh, folder? That's a folder. <laughs> right. Actually, like, it's funny, like a lot of these folders are so slim now because like the generate folder, for example, used to be full of stuff. A lot of them are in the obsolete folder now. Um, I think it's not necessarily that they don't work or anything. Uh, this is probably a question better suited for like Adobe technical, but I think just they use old code or some things about them need to be transferred over like code wise to to new versions or they're just they're switching over to, for example, like ultra key it might they might have added a tool in lumetri color that that does everything better already so they're phasing out of some of these but still there's some really cool ones in here that uh you can't quite get such as checkerboard or what you were talking about earlier to get that to get that uh color to get that comic book sort of look you can go for a, a checkerboard pattern set on a blending mode um, and i would recommend having some fun and diving through a lot of the stuff that's in here like we had the noise fe feature and as you can see a lot of these like they're like legacy effects like there's noise noise alpha noise hls auto but now they just probably all built it into the noise effect but they yep. leave some of this in here for backwards compatibility and just i'm not gonna you gotta ask adobe technical for the execs on why these ones are in here but still some fun stuff in there like circles a fun one that's in there 
uh, you can you can make the stencil alpha and make like a circle. Ooh, James Bond. Stencil. Right, yeah. We all know that reference right there. Yeah, and actually a cool one I've done with this, if you also go into the distort folder is uh, I've done like a fisheye lens effect where I added like a sphere eyes filter and a, and a circle effect. And you get this cool fisheye look that happens. Oh, that's cool. Right. I mean, you don't have to do so much sphere eyes, but. Yep. That's very it's, like it's Beastie cool. Boys. Like, yeah. 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 And, and, uh, and I've this is like a cool pinhole sort of thing. Um, just with the circle and the sphere eyes effect. Really fun. Cause the sphere eyes effect by itself, it's like it just creates a bulge in the middle of the video. But if you combine it with the circle to, to crop it out, you do get this cool look. Um, and I've also made like binocular vision effects too, and added like a green tint. So just throwing out ideas for. Oh yeah, doing like two side by side would totally be binoculars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I remember you had something in there that was like the drunk goggles on one of your uh, presets. Right. Uh, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You could you could add like an echo on there too. Yep. So yeah. So there's a there's a lot of fun stuff in obsolete. Honestly, it's like. Um, Rest in peace to some of these if they're going to be gone forever. <laughs> but, uh, they're always putting new stuff that sort of like uh, replaces stuff and whatnot. Um, perspective, you had basic 3D and drop shadow. Basic 3D, that was a fun one we played with yesterday where you can sort of get this uh, basic 3D. And although maybe you wouldn't use it for like a video clip, if you remember just earlier in the stream when we made that four color gradient background, uh, and put like next video and, and put this, this could be a fun way to do something like that and give it a little bit more oomph, you know? Yep. This is uh, every time you've done this, it just reminds me of the eighties, like, like the, the video clip coming up on the news or whatever. Uh, right. And, and you can animate that so easily using keyframes of just like rotations. That's all it is. Like, and then actually a, a, a really useful way I've done this, like maybe you, you'd think this looks cheesy and you wouldn't want to do it with the video, but one really useful thing, this is great for a lot of content creators like that post on Instagram or YouTube or whatever. Uh, let's say you have a screenshot of a YouTube comment and you want to put it in your video, but you know, you want to add some more life to it. This is a great way. Just add basic 3d add a little bit of animation to that screenshot and you can imagine it it fills in nicely. So basic 3D is a cool one in the perspective folder. Uh, and then in the stylized folder, let's see, which one do I think is fun? Maybe mosaic, oh no, strobe light, sorry. If the desert island effect in here is strobe light, which we did go over yesterday um, and I'll briefly show, but go to yesterday's stream and we showed how you can make transitions with this, how you can strobe color and, and make the layer transparent. But it essentially is also another powerful tool that if you notice a lot of the most powerful effects, they automatically animate something without even using keyframes. So rather than cutting in and out of this clip a bunch of times, you can use the strobe light effect and you can adjust things about it and you can mix it in with another clip and you get this alternating between one and the other. All right, so next up we have time. Time, and let's play with time. I wonder, did I skip, where's the linear wipe? Uh, okay, the linear wipe is in the transition folder. That's one, stick around because we're almost at the transition folder and there's a cool one that I'll, I'll probably make sure I I do feel like transition folder is the one that we're going to like call out a ton of movies that have used those. Cause I feel like that's a very stylistic choice to use some of those transitions. Right. There's a fun example. I'm going to, I'm going to show. So, All right. Yes. Yeah, so time, time we've already, we've already touched on posterized time a lot. And yesterday we talked about echo. So I would say, check that out. And we've done posterized time, but time, I love it. It's two effects here, but super great. We already used it. I couldn't help myself from using them already. That's how useful they are. Um, so next up we have transform. And this one I'd say sometimes is, is a little bit more functional, uh, but some like crop, for example, it's not the flashiest effect. It's not the prettiest effect, but sometimes uh, this is still one that you'd want to take on the desert island because 
sometimes you simply need to crop a video. You, do you like? Do you see how uh, our our faces are cropped into squares right now on the yep. live stream? Uh, sometimes you simply need to crop into a video for one reason or the other, and this just gives you a simple left, right, uh, top and bottom, and you can feather the edge or not. And this and, is giving me um, Ocean's Eleven or like Italian Job. Right. Oh, actually, yeah, you can use it for like a cool intro. And again, like I said, with like the workflow tip, whoever was asking about that, you can see how much easier it is rather than doing sliders, uh, just highlight it and you can just crop it like with the bounding boxes. Yep. Um, so yeah, sometimes you need to crop into an image and then place that image elsewhere uh, or within another scene. So. You're doing the, you got all your stars on screen at the same time and you need to do the little boxes of, yeah. Right. Yeah. So why don't <laughs> I actually, uh, why don't I actually do it to something that makes sense? Like let's crop into this performer and we will use this and we can have this cropped in video clip playing on top of whatever else video clip we want. And you can create cool collage effects like that too, but for the most part, this is very useful and functional. Um, and then also we have simple things like horizontal flip, vertical flip, if you're wondering where those are. Those can also be functional if you shot something backwards or in a mirror or, or yep. upside down. I um, shoot so much footage upside down on my phone. Uh, and so it's super helpful to have something to just like toss on there and fix all this. And again, that's something you can add on an adjustment layer, right? And it will augment everything underneath it. Right. So if you have an adjustment layer and you want to flip a bunch of stuff, then you can do that as well. Uh, I think perhaps maybe the crop effect might try to crop the adjustment layer, but sometimes I forget. Yep. For the most part, you should have no problems. Um, okay, next, I have this these two clips prepared in the front of our sequence here because I was waiting to get to this effect and it's called the, the linear wipe. I'm sure we're all familiar with this. So uh, while we have our video transitions in wipes, the transition effects, not to be confused with the video transitions folder, these are applied as effects. So I'll quickly actually show like gradient wipe is a cool one. It's if you remember the Luma key effect that we did, Gradient wipe is similar in that it sort of wipes throughout the gradient from dark to light. Interesting. So, so right. So if you were to animate it from zero to 100, um, I guess this is just dip to black, but it slowly like dips out based on the uh, lu luminance values. So if I was to put another clip underneath and make it complete the keyframes. This is a gradient wipe. It's actually pretty fun. It's a cool transition. Whoa. Right. And it looks like all complicated and whatnot, but it's really not too difficult. Uh, I just wanted to show that because I because it's fast and it's fun. Um, but what I'm actually going to create here with this last decent chunk of time is a fun effect called, well, it's a fun wipe transition using the linear wipe. Uh, let's not even worry like utility there's nothing really in there, there is a thing in the folder <laughs> there's like a like technical converter effect and then video uh there's just like some technical like utilitarian things like adding a time code you know for sometimes for editing reasons like you, you want to send out a rough draft and you want to be like at frame 137 5 check that frame out and you want it to be burned into the video um or just like simple things like check out the the MVI 392 clip. Is that right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, like you said earlier, there's no wrong way to do things. I've definitely seen people use the time code for like fun. Like, can I do this in five minutes challenge, you know? Um, so yeah, we've already, let's just uh, skip those over and let's just finish off with the transition folder here. Yes. Um, so the linear wipe is a fun one. This is where we want to take a look at what we're working with and what can we make out of it. So when I was shooting this clip, I intentionally knew, uh, I'm sure you've seen this in movies or films or music videos, especially music videos, 
I knew that if I just if I'm riding this escalator here and if I if I stay in still that this pillar will wipe uh, in front of my view just like that and then I can use that to create a cool transition and we're going to transition into this next clip Sweet. so let's pick one of these pillars here so let's pick this second mm, which one's let's pick this pillar here okay so it's going to require a little bit of finesse and a, a a good amount of keyframes, but it's just going to be simply done with the, the linear wipe tool and the options there. So I'll click and add the linear wipe tool or the linear wipe effect, sorry. And in the effect controls panel, like we've been working in, we have the transition completeness, the wipe angle, and the feather amount. So right now it's at 0% complete as we want it to be. And we're going to slowly transition to 100% complete. So we're going to use the right edge of this pillar. So the right most edge, the one that appears on the screen last. And uh, if you ever mess up, you can always just, you'll, you'll figure out what's going on as, as we go. So I'm going to adjust the wipe angle. And that's the key here is that we have a wipe angle. It's not just like one horizontal wipe. Yep. And the, the other sort of quick workflow tip I'll give people is don't forget to use your arrow keys. I'm just using the up and down arrow key to move one degree at a time because that's the sort of level of detail that we're going to need. So I'm going to go to this edge. Uh, also, another common mistake, if you're using the up and down arrow keys on the sequence, you're going to be jumping <laughs> in between cuts. So you're going to be like, what happened? Make sure you're working in the effect controls panel. Um, so we're going to we're going to adjust the transition. Let me go forward here. Also, this is a good way. This is a good example of why you might want to use the turn effect on or off. I'm going to turn it off so I can see what's going on. And remember on this third one here, we're going to use, we're going to frame over frame by frame and we're going to start here at zero and we're going to add a keyframe. All right. All right. And uh, I guess if you really wanted, you could cut the clip, but it doesn't matter. We can still work with it here. And we're also going to add a little bit of feather in general. Uh, so it softens up that edge so now here's here's the workflow we can get into and it's it's gonna start to you're gonna start to get into the workflow and you can do it quickly once you set it up we're gonna go a couple frames over and then we're going to increase the transition completeness a little bit also you want to make sure that the wipe angle has a keyframe adjustment on it the only thing that's going to be steady is the feather amount probably so maybe just like 40 Maybe 50, let's see. We can always adjust that after, but something like that. And we're just gonna wanna make sure that the angle always follows the angle of the pillar. Yep. And the completeness always covers it up just enough. And that the feather leaves just enough room so it doesn't look harsh. Okay, so this is what we got so far. And as we go, we just wanna keep following along. So just using my up arrow keys, increase that a little bit using and my And the keyframes are just basically telling it, hey, this effect that we're applying, go from here to here over this amount of time, then go from here to here, then go from here to here. And you're just inputting information for the values of that filter. Right, it's like a little checkpoint. It's like, yep. at this point, you need to be here. And at this point, you need to be here. And then Premiere will actually fill in the gaps for you. And we can go tweak it after if it's not correct. So we're just, you know, the more you don't have to go exactly frame by frame, as you see, because Premiere will will help you out. So I'm going like every handful of frames uh, and with such a like linear object, such as this straight <laughs> pillar, it's uh, easier for us. Yep. Uh, on my channel, I have a tutorial for how to do this with like a, a more complex shape and masking, which is more tedious, but it's the same idea. Yep. So and anyway, I'm guessing that there's probably like stock effects or footage of like people walking by and like that kind of stuff right right people yep. probably already cut stuff out like this and offer it and yep. actually there there's also another cool tool um in premiere which is uh where you can track a mask uh it's not going to be on the linear wipe effect it's going to be on like whenever you create a mask it's called mask path and like if i had a tv for example and I clicked track path, it's good at 2D tracking. So mm -hmm. not 3D like in After Effects, but Premiere can actually 
analyze the whole clip and try to follow an object if it's a simple 2D object. So I have a video on that on my channel if you're interested, cool. but uh, it's a it's a cool capability to know about. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep going and we'll see. We'll, we'll quickly complete this effect before you know it. And we can even start to get a little generous now with like how much space we're, we're giving in between each keyframe. And you do have to make sure that as you're editing, you want to make sure both of the transition completion and the wipe angle are changing because as the perspective changes, you don't want it to feel like you're just doing a hard like wipe across. You want it to really follow that pillar or whatever you're using for that transition. Right. And I'm, I'm definitely going to have to make another pass through uh, as, as we'll see, you know, the first time I might not have got it correctly because the pillar is moving at a unique angle, but that's where I can, what I'm going to do is play it back and make sure for any portions where I didn't quite get it right to add a little bit more keyframes to give Premiere a little more information. Yep. But first let's just finish. So we get all the way to 100% and let's fix this up all the way to hundred percent. We want to go a little bit over that edge rather than before it and we're almost at the home stretch. So close. Here, we got about also, 10 minutes left, so we got plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. Here's also where uh, that jump to keyframe option is really useful, especially when you're working with a lot of keyframes like this, and sometimes you might misplace your cursor. We're going to jump to keyframe, and we're almost there. So a lot of these fun effects uh, can be a little tedious, but can produce really unique results and get you out of that stock feel these arrow keys okay so okay now we're at 100 so it's kind of hard to see what's going on when you're doing it like that so now we're going to play it back okay i feel like right here maybe we lost track a little bit so i can just simply add some more information by giving premiere one more keyframe and saying hey actually whoops and i'm going to use the jump to keyframe saying, hey, actually be right here at this moment, you know? <laughs> we tried, yeah. but not quite. <laughs> right, I'm basically like holding holding Premiere's hand along and being, uh, just giving it a few more bits of input. So I definitely messed something up right here. And make sure the wipe angle is right. Make it, okay, so. Yeah, just giving it a little bit more bits of bits of information so it can keep up. And the reason this is actually a, no, it's like the keyframes are just going linearly. So just from zero to 100 in whatever amount of time you've given them, whereas the pillar and the escalator are moving at a certain velocity. So that's why you might even see things not track completely but we yep. don't need to get into the physics of, of, of reality right now. <laughs> okay. So I think that's pretty decent. There's a one little bit there where um, not at the right angle. So let's fix that. But I think this should be pretty decent to get the idea pretty smooth. I think, yeah, there's like, Oh one, yeah, that's great. Yeah. There's, there's one bit here if I'm going to be a perfectionist, but <laughs> you can be a perfectionist at home when you're not live streaming. So, <laughs> right. So this is the basic idea of the effect. And now the, the essence is that, you know, this black portion is actually transparent. So now when I lift this track onto another track above it, and I want to bring my other clip in to, to begin, I just make sure actually a little cheat code, I can just go to the keyframe, the first keyframe. And that's where I'll bring my clip to begin. And now this portion of overlap will be a transition. So let's play the whole thing for effect. Uh, we're gonna get to the stairs. Here comes our pillar. And now we beautifully wipe into this other <gasps> clip. Magic. Right. And and actually the I think another incidental like um addition to this is that I happen to zoom out of this clip manually with my camera at the same time. Yep. So we get this, we get this double effect where we're zooming out and transitioning. 
That's and, so smooth. Yeah, and I can put any clip back there and, and it'll always look good. It always looks cool, you know? Oh, magic. Yeah, so just with the linear wipe and a few keyframes, uh, it's, it's a little tedious, but it's not difficult work at all. And you can create these custom transitions that will really make your music videos or your edits really pop and uh, because it's like a handmade effect and everything handmade is always better, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, the, and I think you can tell, like we've said, like the whole stream, it's not just about like an effect and tossing an effect on there, tossing effects on effects or adding a little bit of customization of adding those keyframes, telling a little more information. So it feels like it has that editor's touch on it always makes the biggest difference. Right, absolutely. And so I think we've touched on a, a key effect or a fun effect and some different ideas on how to use it from basically every video effect folder. And we've even dabbled into the transitions folders, which go in between. But I think people can get a good idea of how to combine these, uh, take away a lot of fun ideas of what's possible. And if you missed day one stream, definitely go in there because we covered a yep. lot of what these buttons are and masks and different options. But I would love to know, Andrew, if uh, in this last few minutes, if anyone has any final questions or what you, yeah. what you think or... Yeah, we got about five minutes left chat. Uh, go ahead. If you have any questions, drop them in chat. Um, I'll start out. Uh, okay, so you have, uh, can you open up your presets there? Because oh, yeah, there are just, about uh, yes, a bunch of presets. So like we said, you can get these uh, on the website. Our moderator will drop a link to there. Can you show us your top five favorite presets that you have? Sure. So I know we're not supposed to play favorites with our own work, but I know that you have favorites and I want to know which ones are your favorite. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say for anyone who's just looking to like get some really solid effects, specifically transitions and not have to do all the, all this work by hand, you know, some stuff you cannot turn into a preset, like how we masked that pillar. That is specifically a transition for that clip and you can't really preset that. Um, but I really enjoy just my basic transitions here, such as push it my, my pushes so if we do like a, a push a whip push i have every direction from left to right up and down and they're very simple they're not too crazy uh, i also have uh, spins and zooms so if we do a spin these ones got these are these ones are a bit more uh complex to create but we got cool spins like that oh that's cool yeah, and we have left or counterclockwise or clockwise. And then everyone loves this one. It's like one of the most, most viewed uh, videos on my channel is this zoom transition. So zooming in from one clip to the other. And uh, I have uh, basically I just tried to make things that I think I would actually use. And, you know, like the invert flash that we just did and nothing like too crazy. So even just simple blur transitions, stuff that doesn't come built in to Premiere, but you can create them. Yep. Uh, and Do you have an effect that you have finished that you're like, this is so wild and I would never use this, but it's kind of fun? Yeah, actually, I think I showed you one that I was pretty proud of. Also, one last thing to note is like, I've also adjusted the velocity of these so that they look, you know, smooth. But one really cool one that I liked and I was, I was shocked at, that I even got it and made it down is this cool one called CRT style. Yep. Uh, it's like a cathode ray tube, I think, TV effect. And I just mixed a bunch of, not even that many, but just like some unique effects. It's probably hard to see on the stream, but there's a little tiny like dot grid, almost like a, what I did was I used it. I'll zoom in actually. If I zoom into the effect, is this where you can really see if you're oh, wow. watching the stream? I used like a, a grid effect and a extract effect and a, um, a little like color distortion effect. Tell me that doesn't look just like when you, did you ever used to do that when you're a kid? Oh yeah, like, you get way too close to that <laughs> and you like take a magnet to it. Oh, I totally know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. This basically, this is what it looks like when you put your eyeball right up to like an old TV. You could see the red, green and blue dots. That's so cool. And uh, so, so we have surprised, yeah. one more question as we kind of wind down the stream here. Uh, 
What's a project that's coming up for you? Something we can look out for on your YouTube channel, something that's exciting. What's next for Justin? Sure. So yeah, if you subscribe to my YouTube, I'm constantly putting out uh, lots of new tutorials. Sometimes I do podcasts where either I'm being interviewed or I'm, or I'm interviewing a music video director or some other interesting YouTuber or creative person. Um, so, so, and also what I've really been doing a lot of lately is a lot of short form tips. So like the vertical shorts that are all over the place now, uh, I'm really uh, posting out a lot of quick tips. So if you're just looking for, if you just got 30 seconds, you want some inspiration or an idea, you can check out the shorts that I've been posting. And they're just like really quick tips, like maybe one 45 second portion of our live stream today and, and, uh, easy to digest format. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Justin. Uh, if you all want to follow the YouTube, there are links in chat. They're right there. All three stacked on top of each other. So you can go click all those links, subscribe, uh, get some uh, textures, get some uh, presets and make your videos awesome. Justin, any parting advice or inspiration for our friends who are watching? No, just thanks for everyone for watching. I think from part one to part two, you really have learned basically everything I know about effects. So <laughs> it's true. It's a great overview. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you later for another uh, stream. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for our Adobe Live uh, Express Bootcamp uh, that's happening at 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. And then stick around for office hours at 12 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. Bye. Thanks everyone.